The year was 1994, and the heavy metal world was about to be shaken to its core by Pantera's new album, Far Beyond Driven. The album was released on March 22, 1994, and is celebrating 30 years. In this video, I will be telling the story about how this is quite possibly the heaviest album ever to top the Billboard charts. I'll talk about how Phil and Selma's health problems affected the songwriting, how the critics received the album. I'll go track by track and give my thoughts on each song. Also keep in mind that I decided not to use any AI-generated artwork. So in this video, all the illustrations are, were hand-drawn by myself. On March 22nd, Far Beyond Driven was released via Elektra and East West Records. From the moment it hit the shelves, it was clear Pantera had delivered something great. There were blazing riffs, aggression, and Phil and Selmo's heavy vocals that made this album a classic. The album had 12 tracks and instantly there was a lot of buzz. Songs like I'm Broken and the Black Sabbath cover Planet Caravan were played on rock radio, but this album, Far Beyond Driven, had a lot more going for it. The album broke all expectations and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart, making it Pantera's fastest seller to date. The critics loved it, with Rolling Stone giving it four stars out of five. This was an album that showed the band's unwillingness to compromise. This is the album where Dimebag Darrell got his iconic nickname. The band was also at its peak, far beyond driven, turned them into uh, metal's most uncompromising act. As platinum certifications came in from the RIAA and beyond, it was clear Far Beyond Driven wasn't just an album that would be forgotten. Pantera was topping the charts with a metal album at a time when Alternative was king. Far Beyond Driven was an album born out of pain and struggle for Pantera's vocalist Phil Anselmo. At the time of recording, he was suffering from ruptured discs in his back and chronic degenerative disc disease. He was also in a lot of pain, making even the simplest movements incredibly difficult. Desperate for relief, Anselmo began self-medicating with heavy drinking, painkillers, muscle relaxants, and eventually heroin. As he confessed years later, the media had built him up to be a Superman figure, but he was privately crumbling under the weight of his injury. The pills became a treacherous slope he couldn't avoid climbing. The torment poured out into Pantera's uncompromising music on Far Beyond Driven. Songs like I'm Broken saw Anselmo crying out, I'm Broken, Inherit My Life, as he grappled with newfound vulnerability from the back pain. Um, the visceral, hardline sunken cheeks foreshadowed his fears of never being the same again due to substance abuse. Even more positive-minded tracks had their roots in Anselmo's demons. The defying anthem, Becoming captured Pantera's surging popularity despite the vocalist's private struggles, while shedding skin reflected his resistance to relationship commitments amidst the chaos. The making of Far Beyond Driven was a battle, but it produced some of Pantera's most intense work as Anselmo's angst and addiction seeped into the lyrics. The album was a haunting window into the vocalist's personal war that raged behind the scenes. For Phil, the driving riffs were a savior and a means of catharsis, amidst his self-destructive cycles of pain, depression, and drug abuse. Pantera launched Far Beyond Driven with an extensive promotional tour hitting 12 cities in nearly five days in March of 1994, allowing them to meet fans and do signings as documented by MTV. The album singles Unbroken and their cover of Black Sabbath's Planet Caravan performed respectively on the rock charts. By March, it had sold over 185,000 copies in the U.S. and remained on the Billboard 200 for 29 weeks. Critical reception was largely positive, with Rolling Stone giving it a 4 out of 5 stars, and later ranking it at number 39 in the list of the 100 greatest metal albums of all time. NME rated it 7 out of 10, and Entertainment Weekly gave it a B+. However, some reviewers didn't feel it was um, just as good as their predecessor of all display of power, all Music's Eduardo Rivera said Far Beyond Driven may have been Pantera's fast-selling album, but hardly their best, arguing its huge debut was more of a reflection of a popularity of their previous album. Despite some measured criticism, the album was a significant commercial and chart success that helped solidify Pantera's popularity, receiving praise from major music publications. Guitar magazines like Guitar World also ranked it among the top guitar albums of 1994. 
The album opens with strength beyond strength. This one just takes off at full speed, at least for the first part of the song, because after about a minute, they slow it down and play these slow and sludgy guitar riffs that go on for almost the rest of the song until the end where they pick up the pace again. This was just an awesome opening track. I really like this one. Next is Becoming, and this one has one of the best guitar riffs by Dimebag Daryl. He really brings out that signature squeal sound that has been used a lot in groove metal, and the solo is amazing. He turns his guitar into something else. I don't know what it is, but I like it. It's such an awesome song. Next is Five Minutes Alone, and everything I said about Becoming also applies to the song. Let me also add that Phil Anselmo had some of his best vocals on the song. They're just very angry and brutal and aggressive. They really reflect what he was going through during the recording process. Next is I'm Broken. This is probably one of the best three song runs of any metal album. This is another great song. The guitar riff is a classic and has a cool breakdown. I read one comment comparing the riff to the breakdown to Mississippi Queen by Mountain. I can hear that. Dime was influenced by this music, so it's an awesome song. Good Friends and a Bottle of Pills is next, and this is a song that some people don't like. It's very weird, and it doesn't really have that typical groove and song structure. The lyrics are very explicit, but I think it's very reflective of what was going on at the time. I thought the song was okay personally. I think it brings the album down a little bit. I read one comment comparing this to Dawn Patrol by Megadeth, but anyway, this is the classic. Next is Hardline Sunken Cheeks, and this is a seven-minute song. The song has lots of peaks and valleys. There are sludgy guitar riffs and some faster parts as well. The best part of the song is from about like three and a half minutes to four and a half minutes where Rex Brown plays an amazing bass line and Dimebag turns his guitar into. I don't know what, it's something I've never heard before, but it's just an awesome song. Next is Slaughter. This is one of the heaviest songs that the band has ever recorded. The song is just pure heaviness. It's an example of the band going full blast. I think the song has some Vinnie Paul's uh, best drumming. Such an awesome track. Next is 25 Years. This is an underrated deep cut. The song is filled with sludgy guitar riffs. It's just a very heavy song. They get a little experimental on the song, but some of the grooves are also pretty catchy, and they change the song riffs uh, throughout the, the six-minute runtime. So it's a great song. Next is Shedding Skin. This one uses some dark and haunting clean guitars to create these eerie atmospheres. This also has some awesome groove metal riffs by Dimebag Daryl. I think the guitar playing on the song is just some of his best. Just another great song. Use My Third Arm is another great deep cut. This is similar to the first track called Strength Beyond Strength where they start off very heavy. Then in the middle of the song they play some slower and sludgier guitar riffs. And then in the end of the song they get very fast and heavy again. I think this has some of Vinnie Paul's most aggressive drumming. Throws of Rejection is the penultimate song, and I think on this song, Rex Brown really shows off his bass playing. He's a very distinctive, distorted bass guitar tone that he uses on the song. I think this is an underrated deep cut and just a very heavy song. The last song is Planet Caravan, which is a cover of the Black Sabbath classic from their Paranoid album. This is a very faithful cover. I think it works well on the album. I don't have much more to say about it. So that is all. Let me know what you thought of this album. Do you like it? Do you think it holds up after 30 years? Please check out my review of their previous album, Vulgar Display of Power, which I did on the 30th anniversary. Please like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe. If you have not already, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.